Hello, my name is Sergeant Fab Giuliani with the Support Services Division of Hamilton Police Service. And today, we're gonna to take a background look at the Hamilton Police Canine Unit. The Hamilton Police Service currently has four dog teams, including four handlers and four canines. They make up what's called a PSD, or a Police Service Dog Unit. The Hamilton Police Canine Unit responds to many types of calls, including missing persons, searches, breaks and enters, and robberies. They also assist the tactical unit for suspect apprehensions, and uh, on average, we respond to about 1,500 calls per year. The dogs operate for approximately five to eight years, depending on their health and their age when we start them. Typically, we start them at about a year and a half, and they're on the road trained at two years old. After their terms of service, the canine dogs stay with their handlers. My name is Constable John Sabatini with the Hamilton Police Service Canine Unit. I've been in the unit since 2009, and I'm currently partnered with Police Service Dog Chase. Hamilton Police Canine Unit was created in 1960. At the time, we were the second municipal police department to create a canine unit, second behind Vancouver, which started their unit in 1959. At the time, we started off with two dogs, PSD King and PSD Sandy. A typical day for a police service dog uh, can vary from day shift to night shift. Uh, some days can be very busy with multiple calls for service. Others can be uh, a little slower. On the slower days, we usually uh, constantly training our dogs if we have time to keep them sharp and enforcing the Highway Traffic Act as we patrol the city streets. So our canines are considered dual purpose canines. Their primary purpose is they're trained to detect on human scent. What that means is basically we use our dogs prominently to help us find suspects, missing people, or a person in crisis. They're also cross-trained for different capabilities, which include anything from explosives, firearms, currency, and narcotics. So here we have Constable Steven Chotel and Police Service Dog Radar. Radar is the newest addition to our unit, and they're going to demonstrate what an article search will look like. So when the dog indicates an uh, article with fresh human scent on it, he's going to down with the article located directly in front of him. So what happens is the suspects leave invisible skin cells on pieces of evidence that they may accidentally drop while leaving a crime scene or discard intentionally. The dog is able to indicate on. And what that tells us is that there's fresh human scent on, that evidence and we seize it. So here we have uh, Constable Kevin Wilson and PSD Jake demonstrating a detection search for narcotics. Often we have uh, drug traffickers try to hide their narcotics in unique locations in vehicles, so we use the dog's nose to help us find them to ensure we can get these out of our community. You can see PSD Jake is actively searching. When he locates narcotics, he is gonna sit and point with his nose. You can see here how the dog's demeanor has changed. He's starting to breathe much more in and out from his nose. And as indicated on the front passenger door. Show me. Show me. Hamilton Police K9, come on now, you're risk being injured. This is your last warning. Find them. So this is what we call an open area search. The dog uses the direction of the wind, his nose up in the air, to pinpoint where a suspect or a missing person may be hiding. Our dogs are trained to bark and hold. When they find an individual, they're gonna sit and repeatedly bark. This tells the canine handler where the individual is hiding, and then we can deal with the situation appropriately. So here we have a GPS collar. We have a transmitter and a receiver, one for the handler and one for the dog. We use these very often with uh, search and rescue operations when we're looking for a missing person or a person in crisis. Helps us document all of our search areas. Here we have a tracking harness we use on our dogs when we're tracking suspects. So we have the muzzle and the, the first aid kit for the dog, very important for us. We have a couple other pieces of equipment which are very important on training days. We have a neoprene sleeve 
which just uh, slides underneath the bite sleeves. Just gives uh, our volunteers or our decoy a little extra level of protection. And then we also have the bite suit, which is very important. It allows uh, our dogs to engage and train on biting any part of the body other than the face, neck, or groin. So this one very important piece of equipment we have in all canine vehicles is referred to as a rescue door. So if a canine handler is outside of his truck and gets into a fight with a suspect or needs immediate help, he can remotely call for his canine partner to assist. One of the most memorable calls our canine unit has had this year would have been police service dog Jake and Constable Kevin Wilson. Earlier this month, they were involved in locating a person in crisis and ultimately found them in a timely fashion and very possibly save their lives. As handlers, we have an extremely close relationship with our canine partners. We spend a lot of time with our partners, whether it be in our days off, taking care of them at home or at work for a 10 hour shift. We actually spend more time with our canine partners than we do with our own family members. Thank you very much for joining us today. I hope you learned something today and I hope we provided you an insight into our unit.